The Life and Legacy of the Commander of the Faithfuls, Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen, Ali ibn Abi Talib, alayhi salam. The first man in Islam, the cousin of the Prophet, his son-in-law, the first defender and supporter of the Prophet. We will discuss his sacrifice and his contributions over 30 episodes. So please join me. I'm your brother, Mustafa Al-Qazwini. Salaamu Alaikum. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most compassionate. Our gratitude is it due to our Lord. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. And may his peace and blessings be upon all the messengers and the seal of the messengers Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And may the peace and the blessing of the Lord be upon you and with you all my dear brothers and sisters. When the Prophet وسلم, moved from Mecca to Medina and he started the nation, the process of nation building, Quraysh was very outraged that how could this man who was under persecution here in Mecca, run away, he manages to run away from Mecca and go to Medina, and now he's spreading his mission there too, and he's going to pose a threat to our sovereignty in Mecca. So they were very outraged, and some of them some of Quraysh's leaders, such as Abu Sufyan and others, Utbah ibn Rabi'ah, Shayba ibn Rabi'ah, they decided that, that we have to crush this message and this messenger and this new nation. And therefore Abu Sufyan took caravan from Mecca and he headed to Sham which is Syria on the way back the Prophet realized that Abu Sufyan is coming from Syria back to Mecca so they have to go through Medina the route has to go through Medina Medina being in the middle and this caravan carries the entire wealth of Quraysh, every men and women in Quraysh, they invested their wealth and their money in this business caravan. And the Prophet realized that the supreme power of Quraysh is based on economy, on wealth. And if he's able to compromise this wealth and undermine it, Quraysh would be weakened and they would not have the energy to attack the Prophet and his newly established state in Medina. So the Prophet decided to have a preemptive strike, a preemptive strike against Quraysh. So he said to his companions, that this is the Qafila, Hadihi Eru Quraysh. It's coming back from Syria to Mecca. And if we can cut this supply route and seize this caravan, Quraysh is going to be crippled. وَإِذْ يَعِدُكُمُ اللَّهُ إِحْدَى الطَّائِفَتَيْنِ أَنَّهَا لَكُمْ وَتَوَدُّونَ أَنَّ غَيْرَ ذَاتِ الشَّوْكَةِ تَكُونُ لَكُمْ ويريد الله أن يحق الحق بكلماته ويقطع دابر الكافرين. God has promised you. This is in chapter eight, سورة الأنفال. That either victory 
or this caravan is going to be yours. But some of you, you refuse to fight. You want to get the easy victory. You don't want to go through trouble. You don't want to fight. You don't want to even to spend any energy or any effort. You are too lazy to stand up for them. But God determines that he should crush falsehood and erect the truth. So, the battle of Badr started. And the star and the hero of that bat battle and the victory of that battle was Imam Ali alayhi salam. So when, the, when they stood, the two armies against each other, confronting each other, in Quraysh, there were about, about 950 fighters who carried sword. They had good food, good supply. Even they had some cheerleader women coming with them from Mecca, one of them being Hind, the wife of Abu Sufyan. She was a cheerleader. And they had belly dancing, they had music to entertain the soldiers. While the Muslims, they spent the night in adoration, reflection, and prayers. They spent the night in istighatha, seeking assistance and help and victory from God. In the morning when they stood confronting each other, in Quraysh army, there were the top leaders. Utbah ibn Rabi'ah with his brother Shayba ibn Rabi'ah and the son of Utbah al-Walid, al-Walid ibn Utbah. And they are all related to Abu Sufyan and Hind. So the Prophet sent some people from the Ansar when those arrogant Qurayshi leaders, they looked at those Ansar, people who, you know, they don't have famous names, they said to them, no, 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 we are not going to fight with you. Tell Muhammad to bring us our counterparts, Akfa, our equals. So the Prophet here sent Al-Haritha, Ubaidat ibn Al-Harith, Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib and Ali ibn Abi Talib. So they, those are three, they went to the battlefield and the combat started. Soon Ali puts an end to Al-Walid, who was the young. Al-Walid being the brother of Hind, the brother of Hind, the wife of Abu Sufyan and the uncle to Muawiyah bin Abi Sufyan. And here you know why Muawiyah and the clan of Bani Umayyah, they hated Imam Ali, because this was their first casualty. Their uncle was the first casualty in the Battle of Badr. So Imam Ali puts him down very easily. And Hamza puts <clears throat> Shayba down but Utbah Utbah was able to inflict a wound on Ubaidat ibn al-Harith and then after that again Utbah was killed also and Ubaidah ibn al-Harith after you know some time he was bleeding he also was martyred and he died. And then of course the combat started between the entire two armies. On the one hand, 950 men from Quraysh side, 313 only from the Muslim side. So they were engaged in a combat. And the Prophet ﷺ started praying at that time, earnestly to Allah. He said, Ya Allah, 
I want you to in tahlik hadhihi al-'isaba falan tu'bada fil ard If those 313 are going to perish today and die then none is going to worship you on earth Then Allah sent the angels at that time But Ali was the hero Historians say Ali alone himself just by himself single-handedly he put down 24 of them of the heroes of Quraysh and also he participated in putting down another 28 of them so the total casualties of Quraysh army exceeded 70 people on that day this is beside those who were taken as prisoners prisoners of war he was the standard bearer he was the hero of the battle of Badr. the army of Quraysh was defeated and this legendary picture that they had the legendary reputation that they had that this is an unbreakable army that picture collapsed and dismantled because they used to claim that Quraysh is the only strong army in the region and it is undefeatable untouchable but with the first confrontation by the Muslims that army broke down they gave more than 70 people who were killed almost another 70 who were arrested and taken as prisoners and by the way one of the prisoners was al-abbas the uncle of the prophet he was captured in that battle but then he was released he went back to mecca and then he traveled to medina and he accepted islam and he was with the prophet helping him helping his nephew but he was captured in that battle and ali was the hero ali was the master ali was the leader in leading the muslim army into victory then soon after that Quraysh decided that we have to take revenge the arab mentality at that time probably still now especially among the tribal countries believes in retaliation and revenge so Abu Sufyan he asked his entire army who was defeated and retreated back to Mecca not to cry not to weep he said I don't want to see any tears keep the grudge in your hearts next year we will go back to Muhammad again and we will crush him in his home in Medina and this is what happened he mobilized troops the following year and those troops some people put them at 3,000 in the month of Shawwal in the third year of Hijrah they came again back from Mecca to Medina this time to crush the Muslim community in Medina the Prophet consulted his companions whether we stay in Medina or we meet them outside Medina the majority of them said Ya Rasulullah let's meet them outside Medina this is what happened in the land of Uhud which is not too far from Medina the two armies met each other before the beginning of the battle the Prophet ﷺ asked the archers he placed 50 soldiers at the mountain different locations at Mount Uhud and he said to them you stay here to protect the back of your army in case there is an attack that comes from the back you protect the back of the army don't leave your positions until I give you the signal and the order and don't disobey my commands and then again the battle started first 
the number of the Muslims were about a thousand. Some historians put it at a thousand. The standard bearer, Sahibu Liwa, the military, the, the one who carries the military flag of that battle, the Battle of Uhud, was Amir al Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib. And after that, Quraysh came. And the standard bearer of Quraysh were a family called Banu Abd dar So the first one who carried the banner was Talha ibn Abi Talha, was one of their tribal leaders. And he was considered one of the heroes of Quraysh at that time. So he came shouting and yelling at the Muslims, Oh Muslims! يا معشر أصحاب محمد إنكم تزعمون أن الله يجعل أن الله يعجلنا بسيوفكم إلى النار. You claim that God will send us through your swords to hellfire. ويعجلكم بسيوفنا إلى الجنة. And he sends you the Muslims with our own swords to paradise. So now, فهل أحد منكم يُعَجِّلُهُ سَيْفِي إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ أَوْ يُعَجِّلُنِي بِسَيْفِهِ إِلَى النَّارِ Can someone come forward that I can send him with my sword to paradise or he can send me with his sword to the hellfire? Being sarcastic, of course. Imam Ali stood and the Prophet said and the Prophet they made for him a place where he can overlook the battlefield called Al-Arish, a shade. And he ordered Imam Ali to go. Imam Ali went there soon, within a few minutes. Imam Ali was very fast moving. He would do things very fast, without any delay. So soon he puts an end to this man. He puts them down. Talha ibn Abi Talha. When he puts him down and he was about to separate his head, that man removed the clothing and he exposed his private part. And he knew Ali, when he sees this, he would not get close to him. So Ali turned his face away from him. And then he started begging Imam Ali, please, please Ali, don't kill me. Please, Ya Ali, do not kill me. There is a relationship between us, so don't kill me. The Prophet wasallam screamed from his place, from his quarter, he screamed, Allahu Akbar, the Muslimin, shouted Allahu Akbar, this military flag of the Quraysh tribe was given to another member of Bani Abd dar which was again put down by Ali. And to the third one, again was put down until nine men was killed. Most of them by the sword of Ali, few of them by the sword of Hamza, Hamza ibn Abd al-Muttalib. And then the rest of the army fled the scene. When those men, the heroes in the beginning, they were killed, the rest of the army took off and fled the scene and the Muslims were chasing them. But however, here there was a setback. Why? Because many of those archers did not follow the instructions of the Prophet. They left their positions. When they saw their comrades and their friends, the Muslims, collecting the war booty from the battlefield, they could not wait. They were asking for their share. They disobeyed the Prophet. When they disobeyed the Prophet, 40 of them descended from their positions. Only 10 archers were left there. Khalid ibn al-Walid, who was in Quraysh army, in Quraysh's army, he made a U-turn and he came from behind the mountain 
and he attacked the Muslims from behind. As a result of that, Muslims were taken by surprise. They lost over 70 of their men, including Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib, Sayyid al-Shuhada, the uncle of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. He was murdered. Many of them were wounded. Almost the Prophet was killed on that day. 99% of the companions, they fled the scene and they ran away and they left the Prophet alone, except for Ali. Whenever a group of Quraysh army attacked the Prophet, the Prophet shouts, Ya Ali, ikshifha anni, clear them out. And Ali was running around the Prophet non-stop until his sword was broken. He received another sword by the Prophet ﷺ. And he was defending the Prophet. The Prophet was wounded and he was almost killed. And the companions, they ran away. They started climbing the mountain. إِذْ تُصْعِدُونَ وَلَا تَلْوُونَ عَلَىٰ أَحَدٍ وَالرَّسُولُ يَدْعُوكُمْ فِي أُخْرَاكُمْ You left the leader of the army, the Prophet, calling upon you. You don't even turn your face to see who's behind you, who's calling upon you. Ali stood there with only few, maybe only five or six people with him, including a lady defending the Prophet So here again, Ali is the hero and the star of the Battle of Uhud. And Ali was wounded heavily on that day. Heavily. From head to toe. There were wounds. He was bleeding. And he saved the life of the Prophet ﷺ. And after the battle, the Prophet with Imam Ali, they went back home to Medina. They both came to the house of Fatima. The Prophet gave his sword to Fatima. He said, wash it away. And Ali give, gave his sword to Fatima. And the Prophet said, Ya Fatima, today Ali, Khudihi ya Fatima, faqad adda ba'luki ma alayh, waqad qatalallahu bisayfihi sanadida Quraysh. Take the sword of Ali and wash it from blood. Ali today, he achieved his mission. He remained steadfast and true to his faith. And God allowed through his sword and his bra bravery, his enemies to be defeated. So Ali was the hero of the battle, the two battles of Badr and Uhud. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.